I want to float that so he has to take that step. We're not going to stay in here and do anything with this and wait for this. I want, I want, because he can throw it right there without taking a step. So I want him to go ahead and take, and take that step. So I'm going to run like I'm cowardly. Now when he throws this, I'm sneaking inside and pushing this hand down. Didn't mean to knock you down, Joel. Sorry. You, you saw how I took his balance there. It's nice and easy. He comes in. Whoa comes in, I slip it, my hands are up. I pull this down as I shock in his face. Now, because I'm pulling this arm down and I'm shock and he's feeling this, you see his, his weight, I'm taking his weight. This is just the pain that I slam that head on the ground. It's uncomfortable for him. He thinks he's winning. Slip in, up, down. Get the tap. We're tapping here and here. Because the footwork is kind of strange. If we're, on, if we're always training on this line and he punches me on the line, I float it. I run inside the line a little bit. You see, I was here. I've, I've moved my body, my feet probably is eight inches, but I moved my, my center away. Now I'm on his center. And before this comes back at us, I've rushed in to take his balance. He can tell you, right now, he can still throw the punch. Right now, he can't throw it nearly because his posture is starting to break. It's, there's no power. This, mixed with this, will win. So when I was talking about the, the, the footwork on the line, if you guys watch, when the first punch comes in, I, I go straight back on the line. Now when the second punch comes in, I slid out, so I took a step out, and then before he engaged that, that third punch, I'm taking another step in and then walking with him down. That's the footwork. The footwork is was straight back, over and in. And then he's running into these. Right? He's, run, he's running into our fences because we have our hands up, boom, he throws the punch. We're out and then in. Okay? So tonight we're working on number 11, the Shako Ken, which means like claw, fist, like koas, and like tiger. Now you might hit with a taisho first, having your bones and striking with the palm here into someone's chin. Having the bone structure behind it keeps this strong. You don't want to hit someone with your fingers because they'll bend back and hurt. So if I was to hit a face, it doesn't make sense to hit with your hand. You hit with the bone. This Taisho Ken here. And then once you strike, these curl down to attack the vital parts. Well, where? Well, where would a cat scratch? Your eyes, nasal passages, the lips here, the gums, anywhere you need to. So that's what we're doing tonight. And it's not limited to the face. Wherever there are soft digits, I call a tarantula hand because it's like a tarantula. Mm -hmm. Where would its fangs go? A thousand places, right? So that's what we're working on, this is the shako. Why are we not attacking the jab? Because I just want to, I want to bait him. I want to give him a chance to stop. And I want to pull him into my trap. If, if he jabs and I move away, it frustrates him and he wants to throw twice as hard and fast, his anger goes up, he's frustrated and then he falls. If he hits and I just move it to here, I can do that if I need to preempt it. I don't have to wait. If I know this is a fight, I can just move it and destroy him, but I want to wait for him to throw. Because on the second, he's so angry, he has to step, throw his whole intention into it. So on the second movement here, this time I move this way. I'm moving Uda to the inside. I shift, I move here. He runs into it. This dies out. He was hitting here on the second, but I moved right. See how it died? Why can't he get the third punch off? Well, watch this hand. As this is here, I monitor. Can you, you guys can't see, but I'm monitoring this. I'm pressing this front hand. When he hits, his shoulders change. I'm pressing this in. In other words, don't do this. 
one and leave this unattended, he'll hit you. It's like puppets with strings attached, so it's shift. Oh, I move here. Look at how I jammed him. Then it's just a matter of taking him down from there. Now, I haven't applied the pressure points yet. <laughs> this is the fun part. When I'm here, look at this. Feel that, sir. I'm just grabbing skull. I don't see him as a human anymore. He attacked me. I see him as a skeleton. Here. If you accelerate his skull, what will happen? Breaks. So be very careful. He's very good at ukemi. See? He's not exaggerating. Different attacker. Jab. Cross. Here. I monitor. Shako can any direction. If, again, everyone moves differently here. Everyone moves differently. See how I'm sideways to him? So I can't take him that way. A deep won't go. He's too strong. So I hit here, get him off balance, hook here. Here, there's the Shako off balance. Watch this leg here for a coach. What happens to their head again? Broken egg. This is not a sport. Jump here. Push him off balance. You can get here. Shaha Ashi. This way here. Then you can reapply it if you need to. Drop your knee on their ribs as hard as you can. What would that do? Puncture the lungs. Whoa. Just dig this right into his sockets. He goes to hit me with his right hand. Yeah. I'm just digging these right in. Feel it, sir? Yes, sir. Here, too. Here. Very painful, OK? Don't do this stuff. It's crappy. Right on the face so he can't see. Rip his eyelids right off. Mm -hmm. Try that. Mm -hmm. Police officer <laughs> that's that's confused you with someone else. You probably don't want to just go pow and knock out somebody that you don't know. So we always teach it to step out and then give them a, give them one shot. Now notice that when I hit Justin, I scooch away from. I'm stepped out. I've taken him off balance so he can't hit me yet. But if he's regaining, he wants to throw this punch. As I strike him, I'm moving further away from that danger zone because that's the dangerous part. One will do. So you strike one and then move straight up with the shako again. Notice I sh shoo, pow, pow. You can hit him in the, face, in the nose, his head's there. Boom, it's another taisho into the shako. You can strike him, come under into the shako. You can just go bam and then put it into the ninja notch, murasame. Maybe you're shorter. Pow. You're short. You can't reach up high. You strike up and then you put it right in the Murasame. Push down. Step out. Who is it? Strike him up high, maybe. Really take his next target out. And then you can shock him, kin him. I got him right now. The footwork is what? We step away. Step back in. Strike face, strike belly. It doesn't matter. Even under the armpit. Our hand that's, by, that's guarding our face then comes into action. Straight down. So try not to go over the top and loop this. And the reason why is because Diva is very strong. He's going to hold on to me. He's going to hold on to me. And now we're in a fight on the ground. Because lo he's locked and he's holding me. Even if I strike him up high, I want to slip under. And then I can keep my balance a lot easier. He just, he loses to all purchase. The beauty of this chart is we're taking pieces of a puzzle. Each one of these is a card, right? It's like 52 pickup. But think of 500 cards in a stack. Or you could look at these as I was taught as pieces of a puzzle. Every time we work on one of these principles, we have a new puzzle piece. If you take good notes and you practice it to muscle memory, it'll stay. But if you come to a class, you work on one thing, you go home and sleep, by about two days later, you lose it. 
if you stop training and you quit, this is a skill set that goes away if you leave. It doesn't stay with you. The arrogance of your human ego will say, I still know what I knew 25 years ago when I took that Taekwondo seminar. But no, when you're out on the street, it's all lost because it's not ingrained in your, in your biomechanical movement. But if you continue to train, it will stick there. So we've done several pieces tonight. We've done this, we've done one of these, Q show, the weak points. Let's pick a random one here. We're gonna pick a, let's see, Suzu, number 48, card 48. And we're gonna match Suzu with number 11, the Shako Ken. From the rear Carla Grab, which is Haibuyori, attacks from behind. So see how, once you know the chart, you can just put all these pieces together and create beautiful things. Who's an uke that likes to feel pain? Why is pain important? It's a real question. Minds us we're alive. Minds us what? We're alive. Yes, we're alive. If you can't get used to pain, you'll quit. And that's with anything in life. The weakest people I know that don't last in martial arts have an aversion to pain. Well, we all do, but the more you feel pain, the less it has potency on you. This time, I'm afraid of that, so what I'm going to do is crowd him. Where's the danger? There, not here. Not here, so grab again, fresh. See who it is. Pull him off balance. Now I'm going to crowd this by moving in here and grabbing the Suzu. Suzu means little bells. What do you think that means? So the idea when he grabs me, instead of, I could hit, and then I move in here and grab these, he's going to think, ow, this is a lineage stopper. So I grab and pull. For safety, I'm just going to grab his thigh. So as he grabs here, I'm going to shift and grab his skin. Feel it, sir. So I'm pinching his skin with this Shako Ken. Very painful. Here, and then I'll push one here and push him down. Two of them. How kung fu-like is that, right? Literally like poly zinc monkey kung fu. So again, he grabs from this angle. I shift back and I hit here. In real life, grab the suzu for safety here. Then I turn here and press him. By the time they blink, thank you, they're on the ground. So it's one, two, here. Feel it? Barely doing it, but it's quick. Tacking low and then high. Sword winner. Careful, if he goes to punch, he might shift here and then moving in, grabbing here. One, two, push. Fast, isn't it? Or I back up and hit, and then I can take him here. What was that one? Ganseki. So we went from the Suzu here to Ganseki here. All these puzzle pieces work. Create your puzzle. Go ahead and try it. We're going to go one, we're going to slip out. Notice both my hands are up. I have my hands down a little bit to bait him. And then I'm, I'm rushing this way because if that's a hook punch, he's kind of throwing a little hooky. I'm, I'm running this way and I, my hands are between us. Critical. Because if, like, if I go like that with my hands down, you eat it, that's that. So you want to go, and I'm really kind of exaggerating how far I go. Now watch. This hand, I, I kind of guided his arm, goes up and gets the shako. Shako front and back. Then, once you're here, because I haven't moved my feet yet, I, get, I go here, here, I step in to throw him over my head. Up, down. High, high, step in. Poor guy. This He's way. twisting me around, so as I go in, I have time to slide onto the ground and take it, as opposed to just sandbagging and getting the air knocked out of me. So he's been falling for a long time. Most people aren't going to do that. They're going to freak out and they're going to smash straight down. Come on. Step out. Grab. We're controlling this. Step in. Then just for grins, bash that face on the ground one more time. Can you do it? Yes, you can. Let's go have fun.